Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now I apologize to all the new subscribers to the member site with problems that have occurred signing up for the forum. We had a forum link here that was being clicked on by people who weren't members and so we've had to deal with that by removing that and there's some rights issues with the member site. So for now I've put a link right here that you can go to. I'll make that clickable as soon as I can get that done. And if you have any issues with getting onto the forum you signed up, please just put it in the chat and Jennifer and I will try to get to it as soon as possible. Again, my sincerest apologies for not addressing these things in a timely manner. It's difficult to maintain a private site that's not subject to public attacks, DDoS attacks, and all that stuff I don't want to bore you with. But let's jump over to the user questions. I wanted this user questions section of the forum. I want to thank Kevin for setting that up and, and doing all the work for that. Uh, a thankless job. But uh, I wanted to get in here and, and answer the questions because the questions before had been on the public forum and I wanted to make it so that members can ask questions, get them answered in videos, and then be able to comment on the answers. So I haven't really screened these. I haven't had time. I've been so busy lately. So let's just jump into these one by one and talk about a few things here. The first one is from Stacking Silver, and that's China Gold Manipulation. Brother John F., appreciate all you do in the silver community. Quick question for you. What do you think of the theory that China is manipulating the price of gold low so that they can continue to buy it at low prices instead of the powers that be? Also, I had a thought, what if China either plays this manipulation game or is allowing the game to continue only till it is unable to take delivery of the gold? Once that happens, do you think they stop that manipulation either by their own hand or the powers that be. Thanks again for all you do, stacking silver. There is a lot in that question. So just, I'm going to cover a few things that kind of address it tangentially, but uh, they're important issues for that issue. First of all, I've talked about in the past of this idea of Yamamoto or Yamamoto or whoever he is his gold that supposedly was stashed in the Philippines and then was secreted out and all these uh, conspiracy theories about that there's a, a a strong school that wants to convince you that there's so much gold out there and and Bix Weir kind of falls into that a little bit that there's so much gold out there that the US is going to play a surprise card mm -hmm. for the most part I don't believe that story. I don't think it's true. I think it's disinformation. And I think that China is at least involved with, I don't know if China controls the gold price manipulation, but I think that China at least is involved with the gold price manipulation. Now, the silver price manipulation, that one's even more of a mystery. I've talked about Professor Fichetti's commentary uh, about how the West robbed China of their gold, uh, I'm sorry, of their silver in the past. The first time was through the Opium Wars. The second time was by convincing other nations of the world to not use sil silver as currency, especially India and others, so that uh, the Chinese reserves were devalued by a large amount. So the Chinese have been burned twice on silver and it looks like they're going to try to make a play with gold this time. Now I personally believe, and again this is just an opinion, I personally believe that the powers that be, and again that's of the West, so you have to make up your mind as to what you believe the factions are in these battling powers we're in a time where there is sort of a covert war going on where these powers are not
battling each other openly, but rather they, they appear to be battling each other secretly and then they're using things like news media, leaks, mind control, and other things, propaganda wars that we seem to be fighting, potentially followed by cyber warfare. That appears to be the direction that we're going. But for me, the, the factions that I see that would be based primarily on Daniel 7 would be the Chinese Asian bloc, the American British bloc, the Russian sphere of influence and the revived Roman Empire or European sphere of influence. These are the big players that are fighting it out now for world power, world hegemony. And I personally believe that China is the up and comer in this thing, specifically because of the boots on the ground information that we're getting out of China and how strong the economy is, but also prophetic implications about that the rise of that kingdom and how it hasn't really played a large part yet on the world stage. If you want to go into that into detail, ultimately on brotherjohnf.net, I'm going to start doing walkthroughs of the Bible and Bible prophecy and how that impacts what we're seeing in the markets. So yes, I believe that China is involved in this. I think that China has decided that they're not going to play the silver game this time. They've been burned twice. They're going to play the gold game. And I think that they are in cahoots with the powers that be. As far as how far that goes, I don't know. Now, this is an interesting video that Jennifer sent me the other day and this is the world leaders at their nuclear summit this was posted on the 25th I believe so this is fairly recent and this is actually a video of what was going on there You'll notice that these guys all have these little triangles here on their lapels. They've got a map of the world up here. And they've got this bizarre hologram type of pyramid that's spinning in the center. And everybody seems to be kind of nonchalant about this. Here's a triangle. Here's a triangle. We've got Obama walking in here and you'll note if you look at him, you'll see when you get a close shot of him, there's a triangle. There's another one, so we've got the Asian representatives. And you can see there with Obama, it appears to be an American flag on his lapel, so he seems to be the only one there that doesn't have this nuclear triangle. Make of that what you will, but that's some pretty strange stuff. So, yes, I believe that China is a faction, but China is still a member of this large group of nations that is getting together to try to divvy up the world. Now, if you remember my video that I did on the Ukraine, I personally have come to the conclusion that they're in the process of divvying up that country and I think that probably Putin and the EU and even Obama and the United States have probably agreed to do that for whatever their reasons are so that's my conclusion on that sorry about the long-winded answer this one is from Ranger 1000 silver to the moon hi brother John F this might be a dumb question but I was wondering Everyone says that silver will one day go to the moon. But when silver starts going up, like the way people are saying it will, but would that not make it a bubble? Or would it go to where it is supposed to be now and then correct itself from there? Thanks for the info. Well, this comes up a lot. And that's a term that is used fairly frequently in the financial press. I've done a video on it for Bitcoin that I did one of the first office series on Bitcoin. I also did a bubble video on silver and I actually laid out 
the definitions, and there's about five or six, that tell you whether something is in a bubble. And just some of the real key ones are going to be the percentage of public participation. So the NASDAQ bubble, for example, one of the keys to that was that once it was above two and three thousand and, and it seemed like everybody was involved then you actually had the last bit of the public piling into this thing and it ran it all the way up to five thousand that was a bubble phenomena where everyone's in and there really isn't anyone left to buy now that is not an applicable thing for gold or silver because I've shown in the past that we are now at a stage where the tiniest percentage ever of investors is involved in those two markets and if you take away the paper silver and the paper gold then it's even a smaller percentage so by that definition just that one criteria silver and gold and even Bitcoin are not in a bubble now one of the other important ones is is money that is borrowed being used to buy this asset now if we're talking about stocks we have 50 percent margin but we don't know how leveraged hedge funds are and we don't know how much federal reserve money is going in to buying stocks but we do know that it's very difficult to leverage purchases of physical silver and gold no one's going to give you a loan unless you use your own credit card so by that definition also silver and gold are the farthest things from a bubble so there are many other things like the greater fool theory expecting to sell it to someone at a higher price not because you believe in the fundamentals but simply because you believe another sucker a greater sucker than you will come along so if you go and I encourage you to all link those videos to the Bitcoin or silver bubble office series you'll see that really silver and gold don't meet any of those criteria that that you have when you have a bubble and if you just look at the chart you can see that although silver potentially was beginning to become parabolic in May of 2011 when it hit 50 from a run of about 18 it uh, has now corrected over a period of years and compared to certain stocks like the one I covered recently, Priceline, it's, it's just nowhere near bubble territory. Next question from Wilbird, Enable Scum of the Earth. I haven't read this one. Let me know if you think this is stretching things a bit. It seems that many of our recent wars have been to preserve the petrodollar Iraq, Libya, and most recently Syria, Ukraine, the list goes on. The continuation of the petrodollar arrangement is what allows millions of U.S. citizens to get welfare, free food, free phones, and other free stuff. They're given this free stuff so they will grant their votes to the people who get our nation involved in these wars. In these wars, innocent children, women, and men are slaughtered, tortured, and killed all to keep the petrodollar going and to keep those who do not work well fed and entertained while innocent children in Iraq Libya Afghanistan Syria and elsewhere are getting killed all the welfare recipients over here are getting whatever topping they want on their pizza with whatever flavored drink they want all for free each and every day and they think or are told that people are being tortured and killed so they can have this stuff I find this to be immoral. This makes anyone who accepts these handouts responsible and immoral, yet nobody ever mentions this to them. Am I stretching things here, Will? Well, there's a lot in that question, and so I'm just going to make this the last one for tonight. But a lot of people have protested giving their tax money to a government that's involved in these things. Now, most of you know who are fairly well read in history that the founding fathers of this nation, and I'm not going to get into the Masonic conspiracies and all the rest of that, but taking them at their word, at what they stated, they were not interested in making the U.S. an empire, uh, 
by creating foreign wars. They were interested in just uh, creating tariffs for imports and keeping the U.S. out of foreign involvements. Now, that obviously has not been the case as we've gone into the late 20th and, and, and now the 21st century. We know that the U.S. has roughly 150 countries that, that we have bases in. Now, I would beg to differ with this idea that it's the people who get welfare, free food, free phones, and other free stuff. That's really just a recent phenomenon. If you remember, it was actually Bush who ramped up the foreign wars under the, I'm not even going to go into it, the questionable uh, justifications from 911. So that was actually a Republican initiative. It had nothing to do with the Obama free stuff. Now, the people who supported Obama, who ran against the warfare state, and they're always going to flip back and forth between that to keep that uh, false dichotomy going and keep people off guard. But pretty much Obama has continued the Bush policies to a T, leans a little bit to the left, so he rewards his constituencies with a lot of free stuff. But you have to remember that the Bush presidency rewarded his constituency, which was the uh, MIC, the military industrial complex, with a lot of free stuff. So not really going to take a side on that. Uh, I tend to agree with Ron Paul that it's not in our interest in the long run to be involved in these foreign conflicts, but I do agree that the petrodollar is the basis of this, but I don't know how much longer that's going to go. Now, if we look at the involvement that we're seeing now, we saw the involvement and you have to decide in your own mind whether we instigated things or there were false flags or what was involved in getting th these things going, but it appears that there has been change fomented in Egypt, Libya, Afghanistan, they're looking at Syria, Ukraine. Now, if you look at the governments that have come into power there, if you look at the Muslim Brotherhood and Morsi that came into power in Egypt, or the people who came into power in Libya, or who they're backing in Syria, or who the supposed neo-Nazis they're backing in Ukraine, it doesn't really seem to add up that this is for the purpose of keeping the petrodollar going. I know a lot of people say that and they theorize that the Western banksters need to get more and more people in their system. I just don't agree with that and I think there's a lot more behind this than what's going on. I think that or what's that explanation tells us. I think that more likely we're seeing a struggle between the major four powers I'll say of Daniel 7 which would be the Soviet Union, the EU, the United States and England and uh, Russia. I'm sorry I didn't get all those. Um, so that seems to be the major struggle that's going on. I don't think it's to preserve the petrodollar. I think it's actually to set the stage for the next system. I don't think they plan on making a particular currency the reserve currency, although a lot of people have speculated that they plan on making the Chinese currency the reserve currency. But it seems to me when we look at something like this and the craziness that goes on here that they are trying to get together and decide on what the next world system is going to be and you can see Obama talking to China and some very strange holographic things going on with the UN and the IMF. So I believe that there are big changes afoot but I can't say for sure where we're going from here and we'll talk to you next time.